Hi, hello, Chunsan. Can you hear me? Okay, that's good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to class today. Uh, today will be the very basic building blocks for the deep reinforcement learning. On this basic block, we're going to build very high story building on this week and next week. And so because today's class is very basic and important, I'm going to spend a little bit longer time than usual. So today's class will be one and a half hour class. So if you have very good idea on the contents of the class today, uh, it will be much easier to go forward on Wednesday and next week. So be patient and let's keep focused on the class. At the beginning of the class, I'm going to review the contents of the class of which I gave last week. Um, the first concept I'd like to talk about is Markov decision process. That is the basic assumption of the reinforcement learning. As I mentioned in the previous class, um, our this Markov decision process theory, that is the reinforcement learning came from control theory, very traditional control theory. On the top of that, recently, because of the computing power and memory power, we are now developing deep neural network. That is very powerful uh, method to make a decision and control. So in this class, we're going to combine Markov decision process that came from traditional control theory. I will combine that with the DNN to make a very comp uh, make a solution for very complicated problems. It can include the game, the game problems or invest problems or engineering problems. As I, we, as we have discussed before, what is the requirement of the Markov decision process that can be represented by this equation? That means next state is totally determined by the current state. Of course, in the sequence of state, we have S4, S1, S2, ST, and so on. But if you want to decide, or if the next state, ST plus 1, is totally depending on current state. So when you are designing the micro decision process to apply the reinforcement learning methodology, you have to design the environment so that you have to desi design state vectors so that next state will be totally determined by the current state. The enforcement law, if you want to apply the reinforcement learning, you have to design states so that it can meet the Markov decision process requirement. For example, if you want to predict or uh, next movement of your car, you have to design state of your car. So including velocity, current position, and airflow, and the road conditions, and something like that. And so that once you set up those state vector, you should be able to predict what is the next movement of your car. So it is very important to, to design this state so that you can apply the Markov decision process. If your problem meets Markov decision process, you have to design this uh, environment. And in Markov decision environment, you have state as t you have state as i mentioned before you have state with the given state 
you make a decision and that is called action. The identity who make on the given state, agent is actually making the decision AT. There are several methods to make an agent. One of example in this class, we're gonna talk on this Wednesday is table. We can make a table to show up the value function and state and so on. And upon that, looking at the table, we can make this action. But in the later part of my class, agent will be replaced by deep neural network. So in AlphaGo game, deep neural network will serve as an agent. So DNN actually will make a decision of next position of your black stone or white stone. Uh, in control theory, human can work as an agent, but in reinforcement learning, deep reinforcement learning that is part of uh, machine learning, we're gonna design deep neural network to serve as an agent. That means that during the a training process, we have to update DNN network. DNN network has the parameters, theta, the theta includes the weights and so on. So during this progress of iteration, we have update this network, DNN, using gradient uh, descent method or gradient accent, accent method. So that will be the same part of our previous class. And, but on Wednesday, we're gonna, before moving into DNN, we're gonna use the table method. A table method is useful for small size problem, but the case is big and large size problem, we're gonna use the DNN method. Then we have an environment, environment, one of the environment is Go game or Altari game. So, or stock investment or engineering environment, power distribution network or signal integrity, EMI or circuit design. There might be a different uh, environment. So depending on action, you gonna, you will move on to the next state. And then you will receive return. So when you are applying the Markov decision process, defining the return will be very important. In the Go game, return will be the winning percent. I'll probably if you design this Markov decision process for stock investment, money return, money gain might be your return. So when you are designing this Markov decision process, state is number one, a first important state, this one, a state, a state, and then you also have to design environment and you have to design the agent, and then you have to define return. And then you keep uh, this iterative uh, action up to you find the optimal solution. Another concept we're gonna talk later is the return. This, this is reward and this is return. Uh, return is the, the reward is the immediate reward, but return that is more important is the future some uh, collaborative uh, summation of future return. So return is more futuristic uh, value. So this is the basic concept of Markov decision process. To make, a, a, you keep the iteration and then you will gain more training and uh, education. During those process, we define state value function. That is the expected value of return as state ST, expected value. And the Polish 
also we have to find out the policy function if you either you you found the optimal state value function or optimal policy function you will find the solution optimal solution of your problem so our class will be focused on how to obtain state value function or policy function or sometimes we're gonna use action state action value function action value function is the expected return as state as t if you make a decision of action a so action is involved in action value function don't be worried so much we're gonna repeat this concept again and again this is overview of a markov decision process and policy function pi a s is the probability of action a at state as t sometimes we know this policy that is the case with the model based uh, uh, markov decision process sometimes even we don't know this uh, policy function but still we can make the best solution that is model a model free markov decision process this is the overview of my class. Uh, don't be pressured so much because we're gonna come back and come back again uh, with these uh, figures and we will go up to this number one, two, three at the end of class next week. So this is the overview of Markov decision process. In Markov decision process, as I mentioned before, This uh, return is very important concept. As I mentioned before, if you are designing the deep reinforcement learning for game, GT might be winning percent of the game, winning, winning rate, or money gain, gain, or in, in your circuit, probably BR or power efficiency. There might be many different uh, return. That is the element you have to decide when you are designing the enforcement learning. But special thing I would like to emphasize at this moment is that return is not just immediate reward. It includes all the reward of future. That is another very important feature of this reinforcement learning. We are not just looking at the immediate return. We want to add all the possible returns of future states. Depending on how much you put emphasis on the future, we have different discount factor if you if gamma is equal to one you add all the future reward if you if you choose gamma is equal to zero you only focused on the immediate return because your age is in the middle of 20 you may have to look at more on the future because average age of human being in the future could be 120 or 200 so you have to look, your current state T is equal to 26, probably you have to go up to uh, T is equal to 200. In order to do that, you have to choose discount factor one. However, my age is uh, much higher than you, I'm gonna put maybe gamma is equal to 0.5. Probably I don't look at 100 years later. So it is a kind of human philosophy. When you are designing the enforcement learning, you have to determine your mind how much future you will look at it. But basically, this return, the reinforcement learning target is to maximize this return you will train your deep neural network so that you can maximize this return. 
once again, it could be winning rate or it could be money gain, it could be power efficiency, or there might be many different requirements. If you are working on EMI, this might be interference. And so, so once again, we are designing this Markov decision process. We have to design this agent that is represented by deep reinforcement law, uh, D, DNN. We have to optimize or train deep neural network to maximize this return. That is the goal of deep reinforcement learning. How, how are we going to do that? You do the continued iteration and eventually to maximize this return, you apply the gradient descent method to your deep neural network. You train and train. Finally, this your agent that will be represented by deep neural network will give you the best action to give the highest return. In order to, um, because return is one of the most important concept in the enforcement learning, let's take a look at a little bit. As I mentioned, return is an immediate return, next return, next return, up to the end. Because of recursive nature, it is a summation of current return with a discount of vector of next state return. In simply, current return is the immediate return plus a discount vector multiplied by next return. So current return and next return is correlated by this equation. That is, in mathematics, in high school, we say that is the current relation. That is again expected value. We don't know at this moment what is your return. If you a model is known, you can calculate. Sometimes we don't know what is the rule of game. Let's assume in stock investment, what is the rule of game? We don't know what is the mind of uh, Elon Musk or some high profile people who have a lot of money. It is very unknown. Sometimes you have to go through, you have to gain experience. What are the rules of the game? Sometimes if you know the rule of game, you can calculate, but, but however, state value function that is represented by we, with a given policy phi, later on we, will, we are going to talk about that. Expected value, expected value of return, that is state value function. In the enforcement learning, we're gonna design agent network, deep neural network to predict the state value function. Once you know the state value function, you can make a decision who has the highest return. But anyway, the state value function is expected value of immediate return and future return. But once you know the future return, if you just calculate or ex gain experience of immediate return, you can calculate current state value function. This rule, it actually came from Bellman equation, will be very useful. If your environment is very unknown, we cannot calculate. We, ha we have to gain experience. And there are two different methods. One of them is Monte Carlo method. And second method is the time temporal difference method. Next week, we, I'm going to tell you a lot about that methodology. And you just visit 
what is next state? And you just obtain this uh, state value function of next state, then you can calculate current state value function. You don't know when you are playing the Go game, you don't need to go up to the end of the game. Sometimes you just put one stone and you obtain the state value function and then you can calculate a state value function at current state. I'm very sorry that this will be very difficult concept for you to accept at this moment, but up to next week and next week, we're gonna come back to these equations and again and again. As I mentioned before, this will be very fundamental block to move on. And this state value function is, once again, I would like to summarize this page. State, va state value function is expected value of return GT, that is the future reward. And what we found is that because of this recurrent nature of the return, because once we know the future return, we can calculate current return with the immediate uh, re uh, reward. In the same way, state value function of current state can be calculated from immediate return with the immediate next state, state value function. And this is the form of Bellman equation, is the form of Bellman equation. And this Bellman equation will be very useful when we are calculating state value function. Once we know the state value function of your Markov decision process, you can make the best optimal decision. Now let's move on uh, to Bellman equation again. Bellman equation will be repeatedly used when we are updating or improving your deep neural network. And we're gonna use the gradient descent method, but return itself if you want to calculate the return, you have to go to the up to the end of episode. But sometimes our life is limited, or sometimes we want to use previous experiences. So to save our time and memory, Bellman equation is very useful equations. And we're going to use again and again. So very core part of the Markov decision process and reinforcement learning is Bellman equation. That's why I'm spending more and more time again about the Bellman equation. So here, we, I told you that the state value function is very important core part of our training process and your deep neural network will predict the state value function. If you, some state has the highest uh, state value function, then you can make an action toward that state. But here, I said it is expected value of the future reward. Then our question is, how are we going to calculate this uh, state value function? If you know the problem or environment, you can apply the probability of your action or state. If you don't know the environment or model, such as stock investment, you just gain experiences using Monte Carlo decision, uh, no, Markov this, uh, Monte Carlo process or temporal difference method. But here is the expected value. So this is the new form of Monte Carlo um, uh, Bellman equation expected value is replaced by this probability function pi a s. So it means that pi a s is the probability of action A as state S. 
And this Q pi AS is the value function at S if you make an action A. So action A is involved if you want to calculate expected value. To make a uh, more easy understanding, let's uh, uh, consider our case. Let's assume I, we are at state S. And action A probability is 60%. Action 2 probability is the 40%. And return at next state at with action A1 is let's assume one. You remember this is the expected return, return GT. And return future reward at S next state and action with A2 is let's assume is two. Then state value function can be calculated using this equation. 60% multiplied by the term plus 40% multiplied by this return two, that is 1.4. That is the state value function of, of state S, that is 1.4. So that is the expected return, expected return of future. So your Markov decision process problem is known, known model. That means you know the pi AS, it is called model-based problem. Model-based micro decision process. And then you apply this Bellman equation to calculate your uh, policy net uh, value function. And sometimes if you are, your network agent is represented by deep neural network, this will be used for gradient descent method. This is the, our new state value function with the given a Polish pi. Then you just update this number. And if there is some difference between your previous state policy network and the current policy network, you, you have error function, mean square error function, Using that mean square error function, you can apply the gradient descent method. So again, this is very important Bellman equation, especially useful for model-based Markov decision process. And next week, we, we will come back again these equations because there are many cases in which we don't know the model. That means we don't know this uh, probability. Then this equation may not be applied. But in some cases, if you know the model, then this uh, uh, Bellman equation will be very useful. Another part of the Bellman equation is represented by this equation. This is the action value function as the re future return as state S with given action A. That is the immediate reward R as A at S you, you make an action A. So this state action, action value function has include the action. So this is very useful Bellman equation to make best action. In the previous Bellman equation, you just calculate state value. Or using this state value, we can make best action. But the other approach we're gonna use is the policy-based policy, -based policy uh, 
agent network and this dnn will be based on this uh, action value function where this is the return expected return at state s if you make action a also future the state future return with action a will be a summation of immediate return and future return with the uh, discount vector that is the same as as before this is the second expression of Bellman equation let's apply this equation for a moment let's assume you make an action a1 and let's assume that you have immediate return 0.5 and then 70 percent of, of your action will reach to state s1 that is the return is 1.5 and 30 percent probability you will reach s2 and then you have reward minus one then if you make an action a1 return will be the immediate return plus future return future return has the two part for s1 and s2 and so immediate return is 0.5 and if you make an action a1 the probability to reach state s1 is 70 percent and return at s1 is 1.5 and then 30 percent you will reach to s2 and that is 30 percent uh, ratio it has a probability of 30 percent and the turn is minus one and then total action value function is 1.25 so this second bellman equation is involved in action a and the first one also has the action a so to make a complete state action value function, A will be involved. And sometimes A will not be involved, sometimes A will be involved. But action is very important part of Markov decision process. So in initially, we have to calculate expected value to calculate state value function, to make expected value to real calculation, we will have to include the action and probably we also have to include the action. And this Q, that is the action value function is considering the action. And for each action, we have different uh, return but in the case of state value function, we involve the action by applying the probability of action. And sometimes we're gonna use this uh, state value function and this will be represented by DNN and we're gonna use to make an uh, optimal solution. In the future also this uh, action value function will be represented by the neural network sometimes we are going to use this uh, state uh, action value function to make optimal solution. So uh, there, there, those are two different approaches. Sometimes we're going to combine them together or sometimes we're going to use separately. Sorry that this is a little bit complicated at this moment, but we will move on step by step again and again uh, to uh, review this uh, Bellman equation. But, I'd like to emphasize at this moment once again that Bellman equation will be very useful equation to train your deep neural network. We have to, sometimes we don't know what's the probability and what is the return. So we have to visit many different states and gain experiences. And in order to do that, we need to do the, a lot of iterations. And uh, sometimes, how are we uh, do those iterations? 
we will use the exploration method. Sometimes we're gonna use exploitation method. We, we're going to review those again. And during the mental, uh, Monte Carlo approach, we're gonna use this Bellman equations. Also temporal difference method, we're gonna use this equation again. Now, I would like to spend a little bit of time to look at overview of whole this class. I'm going to revisit again this slide later on, but I would like to give you um, the whole picture of our class. Probably this slide summarizes whole picture of a textbook, 500 page or 600 page. Now, I assume that you have basic idea of Markov decision process and Bellman equations. And now we're going to use both of that methodology to make a best solution. So now I'd like to give you the reinforcement learning method. Sometimes your problem may be very small size. And then we're gonna use the tabular method. We're gonna make a table and we will update during the iteration to make a best a policy network or best state action function. Once you have value a uh, function or state value function or action function, you can make a decision. If you use the value function, you make a design an action who has the highest a value function. Let's assume that you obtain the state value function, you decide the highest probability, this is the stochastic number later on we will come back, you design the highest probability as state as who has the action, who has the highest probability of winning rate or money gain. But if your size is small, we can use the small table. If you, you know the probability of action, that is model-based case, you can, we will have the prediction problem or control problem. It is very easy to understand. And today I'm gonna revisit a game. If you don't know what's the rule of game, as I mentioned before, you can try many different episodes. You have to vision many different cases without knowing the rules, without knowing the probability. And then you have to and, uh, use the Monte Carlo method or temporal difference method. That is the core part of the class next week. And of course, when you are applying the Monte Carlo method or temporal difference method, you have to use the Bellman equation. That's why we I spent some time of our class to talk about Bellman equation. Also, even in the case of model-based case where you know the model and probability of your action, still you need to know the Bellman equation to update your tables. Now, let's assume that you have very large size problem. Then it is not easy to make a simple table. So we're gonna use the deep neural network. And this network is called deep reinforcement learning, learning. In the case of DNN, there's a large uh, problem. So we have to design deep neural network and we have to uh, design the cost function and we have to design the backpropagation equations. And in order to do that, we have to uh, be able to derive the gradient distance equations. There are two methods. One is the using a value function, state value function. Here I, I put the theta. Theta means the parameter of the deep neural network. So that means that your state value function is represented by deep neural network. During your training, you have to optimize this theta. And here, so here, agent is represented by DNN and we have to design 
the cost function, and then you have to apply the gradient descent method. These two methods is update equation of this parameter theta. We will, I will derive all those these equations. And sometimes we can, we will use the Monte Carlo method. That is the first equation. And sometimes we're gonna use the temporal difference method. And sometimes we will, exp one of the method to update this uh, parameter is called star star. The other method is tip deep Q learning. And I'm going to spend some amount of time to discuss Monte Carlo method, temporal method, star star and deep Q learning method. But once again, this is, in this case, deep neural network will work for as an agent and we have to update them. In this case, this agent will update, calculate this state value function. And we will make an optimal decision who has the highest uh, state value function. You remember that this is the future return, expected future return. Second method is to design DNN for policy network. Theta means that it is the deep neural network and this policy-based agent that is represented by pi theta as a, it will predict the highest probability action. Who has the action A, who has the highest probability of winning date or money gain. So this pi theta will give you the probability distribution of your purpose. It is very stochastic. In our class, I'm going to give you two different methods, reinforcement, reinforce and actor critique. Here also, we have to use the gradient method, gradient descent method, but we don't know what's the probability. So we are going to use sampling method. We will just visit and gain experience and upon those experience and of return, we're gonna update this network. That is the, this is the overall view of uh, the the enforcement learning. I I I agree that this single page is summary of whole textbook of 500 pages, maybe even more. Uh, but uh, once you have the overall picture of this, so today this class at the beginning I'm. I want to spend, I spend time to talk about what is the Markov decision process. Second one is the, what is the Bellman equation? Bellman equation will be repeatedly useful in reinforcement learning. So uh, material I would like to explain at this page is that what is the overall picture of reinforcement learning? On the left side, small problem here, on the left side, small size problem is a kind of traditional reinforcement learning. In this current world of digital revolution, our problem is much, much more complicated. And we don't know the rule of game. And then the neural network will solve as an agent. Once we use the A, uh, we describe the agent with the deep neural network, we have to train them. That means we have to use the back propagation. And uh, there are two different uh, methods basically and combined with the uh, Bellman equation is Monte Carlo method and temporal different method. Another uh, different approach is that whether we are going to use the state value function or action value function. Sometimes we're gonna combine both together. Sometimes we're gonna use it separately. And if you calculate the state value function, that is called value-based agent. You train them. Once you have this network, you make a decision. This is very deterministic process. 
who has the highest uh, value. Another type of approach is policy-based agent, then it will give you a probability of action who has the highest winning rate. So some, some of action will have 99% of winning rate, some of them will be 1%. So you, you can choose 99%. And because of a different nature of value function and the Polish function, we're gonna have different gradient distance equations. This is the summary of my, the first part of my class. Now let's move on to next class. So we just completed the overall picture of our class. Now let's uh, take a look at the focus of my class just today. I'm gonna focus on the small size problem. And then that means I can use the tabular method. Uh, next week, I'm gonna use the DNN to represent this agent. But today, to give you the basic idea of Markov decision process and Bellman equation and Monte Carlo method and temporal method, I'm going to use the very small size tabular method. In this case, also, I, I will assume that we know the Monte Carlo process. That means that we know the reward and probability of action. So it is a very simple problem. But in real world problem, we don't know what is the probability and what is the reward. So we have to gain experience. That is the part of the next week. And sometimes we're gonna calculate the value. Sometimes we're gonna evaluate the policy. And we're gonna use the table method to make an optimal decision. We're gonna do the iteration and iteration again. The computer will do for us. And that's uh, this kind of number one to number five, and we call this kind of process is dynamic programming. And we will make a, a value, we will make a value evaluation. Oh, I'm sorry. We will oh, do the value evaluation. And we're gonna do the policy evaluation and iteratively we will update until we found the optimal solution. And I'm going to give you very simple cases. Now, as I said before, I'm gonna give you a very simple small size case, small size, tabular method, and model. That is the basic assumption of the class right now. So let's assume this is a, one of the very simplest Markov decision process. Let's assume I have a grid S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, S8, S9, S10, S11, S12, S13, 14, and 15 is the N. Let's assume that I am moving one step from S1 to S2, reward is minus one. It's a kind of penalty. So this problem is to find a policy to n at the minimum number of steps. That is implication of reward minus one. If you move one step from S1 to S1, reward is minus one. Minus means penalty. The, this Markov decision problem is to find 
a solution for each state to reach to the end with the minimal number of steps. We're going to use the Bellman equation to find a solution for this one. And second problem, second uh, condition of this problem is I will assume that this is known Markov decision process. That means at each state, movement probability of action east, south, north, west will be the 25%. That means it is the random action. Random action. Uh, I told you that in many real problems, we don't know this probability, whether it is random or there is certain preferences. And then in it kind of that kind of problem, stock option, we don't know what is the mind inside each person, what is the mind inside Elon Musk. So it is much more complicated. Then we're going to use the deep neural network representation. And we're going to use many different uh, methods to evaluate what is the probability and what is the return. But in this case, we know the return and probability. So that's why it is very simple problem. But from next class, I'm going to uh, develop some methodology such as Monte Carlo method or we, we're going to develop best policies even though we don't know these probabilities. But in this case, the question is what is the policy of, of our action to move up to the end? The first question will be what is the number of steps to reach to the end. You can start from S1, you will move randomly and eventually we will reach up to the end. Then the question of value function is what is the probability to reach it to the end? Because of this, this is a random uh, action, we don't know. And I'm going to use the Bellman equation to calculate this one. Also, I'm going to use the discount of vector one. That means we're gonna summate, summarize all the reward. That means we're gonna add all the penalties. So this is very complicated at this moment, but once we know the Bellman equation, it is going to be very easy. So please pay attention. Let's start. Let's start this table 0, 0, 0. Oh, let's initialize all the value function is equal to zero. What is what is our target? We this is the expected expected return. That means number of steps to reach to n. Later on, I will show you that once we know this uh, uh, state value function, we can make best action. And those are our purpose of reinforcement learning. Then let, let's take a look at this part. Let's update this one. This one is expected, then we have to apply the probability function here. Probability of north is 25%. Immediate return, if you move one step, reward is minus one, that is penalty. And next state value, next state value is zero. This is zero. Next state, that is the nature of this Bellman equation is equal to zero. And east, south, west, all together you add all this one and you finally get minus one. Then you change this number to minus 1.0. 
So Bellman equation means once you know this probability and what is the next state, next state uh, value, you can calculate, you can update this state. Once again, this is the model-based case. That means you know this probability of action, 25%. And then you repeat this process for all the 16 state and continue repeatedly again and again, update, update this state value function from zero to 15 and then, and next time again and again. This is the case. Initially you, up, you state, initialize all the value function zero and next state, it become all the minus one, except this one, because it, it, this is the end. And then update again and again. And finally, you will reach this point. That is this number. What is the meaning of this uh, table? K infinite means that you have completed your training using reinforcement learning. And if your, your value doesn't change that much, you can stop. So minus 59.4 means if your action is random, the number of steps to reach average step to reach it to the end is minus 59.4. This minus 30 means average number of steps from here to reach to the end is minus 30. Of course, you make an action from here to so just right. It is one step, but because of random nature, sometimes you will move left, sometimes you go up, and eventually it will reach to the end and number of average steps will be minus 30. This, so, when you, so when we are calculating this table, this is the small size, once again, small size, and we know the model, and plus Bellman equation, we obtained state value function. That is this one. Once you have state value function, you make an action. So, now, this is very important part of the class. So now let's assume that you obtain state value function. Then please look at that. If you are here, the value who has the lower number is this direction or this direction. If you are, your state is here, the value who has the highest value is this direction. So this is becoming a policy. Initially, your policy was random. But once you obtain state function, you can obtain the new policy that is called greedy policy. If you apply the Bellman equation to this great policy, you will obtain the new value function. Please compare this. If you choose random pol if you choose if you choose random policy you have much larger number of expected steps to reach to end but if you obtain the greedy policy that came from this updated policy then you will obtain this one this is optimal optimal state function and then from S0 to 
and only you need six steps because you follow this policy. This is a way to make the optimal solution in the enforcement learning. Because this is small size problem, you can use the tabular method. And because this is the model-based case, but in real, there is not the, uh, this is very special case. And then you can apply the Bellman equation to update state value function. And using the state value function, you can update policy and you calculate the new state value function and you make this iteration. Keep going on at these four different states. Update policy, calculate value function, and using those updated value function, you calculate the new policy, a new state value function, and, and so on. So once you have value function, you have policy. Initially, your policy was random, you calculate the policy. Then using this uh, value function, you update policy and you update value function. Eventually you will reach to the optimal value function and optimal policy. That is the core part of the basic core part of the reinforcement learning. Only difference in neural network team reinforcement learning is that Sometimes we don't know the probability. Here, we know the probability function. We know the probability function. We was able to calculate that probability function was 0.25. But in real world, we don't know that. That is the difficult part of our real problem. And also, the in real world, problem is not this small. Let's assume we are talking about whole population of globe it will be billion size of billions. State will be much, much complicated. It has the, including the emotions, IQ, position, state, income. Even though if you wanna describe human society using our reinforcement learning, the number of element, vector element of state will be almost infinite, large, large problem. Then we're gonna use the deep neural network. That is the main target of our class. Um, once again, today, uh, I was giving you some example of small size problem and using the iteration method and Bellman equation, we was able to find the optimal solution. But next week, we're going to use the deep neural network to describe this reinforcement learning. And because we don't know the, what's the probability because of random nature of our problem, we're going to use the, Marco, uh, uh, the Monte Carlo method or temporal different method. And in Alpago case, Input will be state. State can be represented by 1919 gray information. And the neural network could be represented by CNN because this is kind of image. And output a probability of next action that has the highest winning rate. So it may have many different positions, one, two, three, four. And this network will give you 90%, 1%, 0.1%, 0.1%, .1%, or something like the uh, winning percent distributions. And we're gonna choose the position who has the highest winning rate. This CNN network will give you those decisions. And when we are training this CNN, we're gonna use gradient descent method and we have to gain these experiences and to train them and using the previous game record or by having new games between the computers. Uh, this is the end of my class today. Thank you for your patience. 
Uh, I feel much better right now. Uh, I look at the screen, students, I, uh, I, I feel like you have some good idea about my group decision process. And so let's revisit again the beginning of my class last week. I told you that there are more than 30 keywords in the enforcement learning. And let's re revisit some of them. Oh, I'm sorry. Because the battery is uh, okay, computer is okay. Now we know the action. Brito, if you have some good idea about action, can you wave your hands? Thank you. Dongyun, Seungyun, you are still there. Heon and Songwoo, Jihoon. Heon, you understand the basic concept of reward? Yeah, thank you. Songwoo, now we know uh, what is the return? Yeah, Jihoon, now we can talk about state. Can we? Yeah, thank you. Minsu, you are good in environment definition and how to design environment. Uh, now we know the discount of vector, agent, loop, sequential event, uh, control and prediction. We're gonna talk a little bit next week. We know the Markov decision process, Bellman equation, value function, optimal value function, state value function, action value function, that was the part of my class, policy function, this probability. At the end of our uh, training, we're gonna make an optimal policy that will be represented by probability of action A with the optimal pol uh, policy pi. And from 11, next week, I'm going to talk about what is the own policy network of policy. And also we're gonna uh, talk about value network and this is the dnn representation of agent that's the basic part of the class next week we're gonna talk about policy iteration value iteration episode and sampling this will be the core part of next week and i will talk about monte carlo method temporal difference method star star q learning the enforce actor critic exploration exploitation greedy monte carlo tree search model-based, model-free policy. So I think we already have covered more than 60% of the content which I, I was planning to talk about. Thank you for your patience. You know, it is very beautiful to combine team neural network. That is the machine learning combined with this control theory. And now if you can, are able to apply these two methods into your problem such as engineering problem it is really beautiful very beautiful approach it's a beautiful methodology you you will you you're gonna use for a long time in your life because computer technique computer performance will be improved and then it will take less and less effort to do this that is the core part of my class today thank you for your kind of attention see you next week you're gonna enjoy much more next week don't miss the class next Monday and Wednesday. And it, you will talk about all these issues next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.